That's why I'm really happy that I ended up finding this art form because I don't know. Before the, the, the beat shit, I was definitely like making videos with my little brothers and trying to direct and I wanted to be Steven Spielberg so bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it was like, I don't know. I didn't want to just be like, I didn't want to be mediocre at anything. So it's like finding beats, I was able to like find some shit that I could do what I really wanted to do and it wasn't, it just made more sense for me, you know? Yo, 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 it's your boy Hakeem and you're watching Our Generation Music. And today I got a very, very special interview for y'all. We gonna be okay. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Of course, man, of course. Um, you've been killing it, man. How you Thank feeling? You. I'm blessed, I'm very happy. Happy to be here. It's amazing, man. Earlier you said this is, felt like you were on Jimmy Kimmel just seeing the camera guys. Right. Just put it together. It's beautiful. I was very almost like almost starstruck with all the cameras. Never seen so many. Yeah. No, just playing. You know, we stay prepared <laughs> with OGM. You know, you get top of the line. But cameras is a big thing for you because, you know, maybe people don't know, but you're really into films and filmmaking. Mm. Yeah. Talk yeah. a little bit about that. How you know about that? Damn. I didn't know we was on Nardwar right now. My fault. Uh, a little Nard King <laughs> come out here and there, you know? <laughs> No, but yeah, um, actually, uh, you know, I'm originally I was born in Georgia, but I moved around a lot when I was a kid. Like every year or two, we would move. And um, my parents initially wanted to move to North Carolina because there was like a film school over there. And they were like, OK, like you should go to film school. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to refer to myself as OK because they don't need to know all that. You know, mm -hmm. They were like, OK, you should go to film school. Um, so we moved to North Carolina and yeah, I don't know. I've just been living there ever since. I lived in New York for a little bit this past year, and um, now I'm kind of staying in L.A. right now. But, yeah, I've always loved film, very much influenced by, like, Wes Anderson. and Amazing. Yeah, Wes Anderson, Harmony Korine, David Fincher. Mm. I love movies. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big. You like movies too. I'm a big movie head. What? Let me let me hear a little top three real quick. I want to hear your top three first because that's what about to be my next question. Okay, all right. Let me see. Um, I'll say my top movie is probably Fantastic Mr. Fox. Okay. That's my favorite movie. It's so good. Um, then I'll probably say Rushmore by Wes Anderson. That's a good movie. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'm gonna top it off with like a little um, probably Harold and Maud. Harold and Maude. That's a movie about, you know about that movie you ever heard I've of? never heard of that one. It's, I thought you were about to say Harold and Kumar, nigga. Oh, uh, no, that's, <laughs> that's a good one, too. That's a but, great one. That's a good one. But, like, Harold and Maude is this kid. He's, like, 17. He's mad emo. And, basically, Brody falls in love with, like, this, like, 75-year-old lady. And she takes him on a wild excursion. Mm. And it's really cool. I don't know. I like it. She, like, shows him that he doesn't need to be all depressed all the time because... She's about to die, literally. She's literally old as fuck. Like, nigga, you got it good. Right? Like, why are you doing that for her? You feel me? You might as well take advantage of it. And then yeah. he falls in love with her, and they have their own little whatever the fuck. But it's sick. You should watch it. If anybody watching uh, movies should watch Harold and Kumar. Yo, make or sure. Harold and Kumar, Harold and Mon. Harold and Mon. <laughs> also, Harold and Kumar, because that's yeah, like Harold, a classic. That's a classic, too. That's a classic. That's a good story. You fucking White flip. Castle or not? Yo, I used to love White Castle back in the day, but I probably haven't ate it in so long. Yeah, those sliders was crazy. Hurt. I can't do it, bro. Yeah. It fucked my stomach. After a good night when you're like 20, 20, 21, yeah. White Castle is fire. But after a certain time, you got to like, grow up. Got to let that one be for the young niggas, all right? Yeah. But um, for me, in my top top three, I got to go with Superbad. I oh, love okay. Superbad. Judd Aptot, mm -hmm. amazing director, killed it. Um, Goated. I feel like that run that he had with all those guys, Seth. Um, and and just all the movies they put out, Forty Year Old Virgin, Joe. That was he was, he was coming up. He was coming up, man. I had never seen a performance like that. They, I really thought I was there with them. I thought those were my friends. That's how you know it's like a good like, um, like comfort movie or mm. comfort show. It's like I feel like I'm just about to go hang out with the guys today. Yeah, that's oh, like absolutely. a good TV show. It's like, oh, what the fuck these niggas doing? Like, absolutely. turn it on. I'm hanging out with Tony Soprano. I'm a fucking mobster for the day. You know what <laughs> I mean? But definitely super bad. Um. I would have to say my second, and it's got to be Planet of the Apes. Ooh, the old one? Old ones, You yes. don't know about the old one. The, first of all, the scoring Oof. in that shit Oof. is absolutely beautiful. Oof. Like, the color, the, the, the color was shot in, the, score, the movie scoring is absolutely amazing. Um, one of my favorite franchises, I just watched a new one, fucking sucks. 
Sorry. Y'all got to get y'all shit together, Hollywood. That franchise is one of my faves. Don't like the, what they just did with the new movie. Absolutely terrible. Don't watch that one. And, man, my third favorite movie would got to be The Dark Knight. Mmm, that me up. Gotta go Dark Knight. That me up. I mean, honestly, you gotta give it to the whole trilogy, but, like, honestly, man, like... I focus superhero movies, like, yeah. sometimes, but I ain't gonna lie, the reason I love Dark Knight is because of Christopher Nolan. He's, Bro, he's he, goaded. He's such an amazing, phenomenal director, like, from fucking Inception. I didn't like Tenet. Mm. You not. know what you should watch from him? What? Memento. Memento. You don't know about that one? No, I don't. I love getting put it's on. It's a guy. Shit. It's a guy that doesn't remember anything, and it's like he starts his day, and some type of crazy thing happens. I'm not gonna spoil it, but some crazy shit happens. He doesn't know what happened. Yeah. So he writes himself post-it notes, and he gets himself tattoos. He's like, brush your teeth. He gets that shit tatted. He gets like, mm. wipe your ass, because he doesn't remember. You feel what I'm saying? Wow. He got everything tatted, and then he just like remembers everything. It's it's one of Christopher Nolan's like first movies, really good. I yeah. Really and then I gotta give honor honorable mention to Stanley Kubrick. Mm. What's what's your Stanley Kubrick movie? It's Space Odyssey, man. Wow. That's some shit. Pauline Paul, the furniture in the scene where they're they're in space and shit, mm. like. Look at Pauline Paul. His, you know, his furniture is amazing. Bro, that uh, well, his dad's so... furniture, but he's taking over now. But like, I like that, that movie. I also like um, Full Metal Jacket and Eyes Wide Shut. Eyes Wide Shut is dope. I, I Clockwork. I'm in LA. I'm in LA right now. I feel like I'm in Eyes Wide Shut. Where these parties? I'm like, oh my god. So, You're not gonna get me like that. Did he party? <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> Watch out, buddy. Oh, man. <laughs> you ever seen all the, like, well, I figured out when the whole Diddy shit went on, like, niggas was uh, joking about, like, this is what uh, the Diddy parties was like. Crazy. Dang but, man. yeah, I love I love Stanley. Um, I think he was super, super fire. Um, and, you know, uh, me and Sam, like, uh, one night we was at his house watching A Clockwork Orange. Mm, that movie's freaky as fuck, but it's that, fire, though. It's fire. Yeah. He's very, like... It was, it was a lot of like anger in that movie. You yeah, know what no, I mean, and I beautiful colors too. I, I watched that movie like three times in a row because I didn't get it at first, and I was like, I have to understand this. And like, once I watched it a couple times, I realized that nobody in that movie is a good guy. Everybody in that everyone's movie is fucked a piece up. Of shit. They're all a bunch of pieces of shit, but it's yeah. super fire in their own way. I think it's like a, a testament to like moral fiber. It's like, mm. where do we all align? I like, like that moral you know? fiber. Yeah, it's like, okay. oh, we all agree that this is bad. Like that's like a main thing in life in the world. Like we can all agree like this is bad and. Okay, but you did some bad shit too. I just, you know what I mean, like. Yeah, but like, bro was kind of doing some crazy shit. No, no, niggas was wilding. He was doing a lot. He was definitely wilding. I, he, I was gonna was say he was in his blanks bag, but I won't say the Twitter name that'll <laughs> spark controversy right now. We're not gonna do all that. Oh God, <laughs> he was in his one bag. You know? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So movies is big for you, mm-hmm. um, and I think you know. I don't know if you think this, but I feel like that's one of the reasons why you've been so good at producing, mm. because it's ultimately like you, you know your beats are like a movie. Like mm. you're 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 painting something for someone to you know not only you know visually see when someone shoots a music video, but to hear like it's like a soundtrack to it. No, absolutely. I'm not gonna lie. Like originally, I wanted to be a director, so it was like you have to take over the all dimensions of the sound and the audio. I said sound and audio, but sound, video, like set, all that shit. But then it's like when you make beats, it's like it's kind of just one thing. It's just only audio. So I feel like it's more easier to make it more cinematic when it's just the music. You know what I'm saying? Like it's only in your ears. You don't have to worry about the visual side of things. But you are like painting something for an artist to come in and like finish the painting. Yeah, hell yeah. That's, That's why I'm really happy that I ended up finding this art form because... I don't know. Before the, the, the beat shit, I was definitely like making videos with my little brothers and trying to direct. And I wanted to be speak Steven Spielberg so bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it was like, I don't know. I didn't want to just be like, I didn't want to be mediocre at anything. So it's like finding beats, I was able to like find some shit that I could do what I really wanted to do. And it wasn't, it just made more sense for me, you yeah. know? Yeah. And you, you know, um, your cousin was the one that um, put you on FL, um, put you on game. Like, yo, you can make these beats. He's actually an EDM DJ, and mm-hmm. it goes back to someone that um, that produces and made a lot of money off movies. Skrillex. Yeah. Oh yeah. Skrillex did all the 
um, Transformers shit. He's still getting what? he's still getting now you learning paid. me some shit. I didn't even yeah, know. Yeah, he's still getting paid off the fact that he's made all those noises in Transformers in the music. What? That's yes. Crazy. Like, no, yeah, my cousin definitely is the one who he he had helped me get like a little link to like drop or um FL four at, mm-hmm. at a certain point. And yeah, I love my cousin. I, if, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't even be here right now. Shout out to Devin. Um, yeah, it's I don't know. It's crazy. It's yeah. crazy, man. And then the you had the teacher, um, the band teacher yeah, Mr. too. Mr. Cotton. Yeah. Mr. Cotton. Has he reached out or anything? Like, nigga, you, you doing talk, it? I, I talk to him sometimes. I talk to him sometimes, but I don't think he knows what's going on. But he's married now. He has a kid, and yeah, he's doing his thing. He's like living life, and I'm very proud of him. And bro, but when I was in eighth grade, I moved from Illinois to North Carolina. And you know, I was only living in I, everywhere I lived outside of North Carolina, I would only live for like a year or two. Wow. So I never really got too turned with the culture of anywhere. Nobody ever really fully embraced me or anything. So it's like I didn't really have any ties anywhere. And then when I came to North Carolina, um, I came from Illinois, which was like a very like country like rural like you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and then i came to north carolina which was very much like like turn like you know what i mean yeah yeah so i was the only white kid and it was just kind of like some shit like everybody was showing me shit i had never seen yeah it was a culture shock right for sure yeah so it was a culture shock and mr cotton saw something in me and he was like yo bro if you ever want to like skip class or like you you just don't feel comfortable wherever you at. Just come to the band room, bro. You could chill. You're valid. And he's the one who introduced me to the concept of like making beats because before that I didn't know about making beats on the computer. He was the, really the one that like sparked the interest. And then my cousin is the one who like filled in all the blanks. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. He was like, yo, FL, da 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 da. But my band teacher was like making beats, like hip hop. Like this is mm-hmm. this is a thing. Like you can do it on the computer. And I, at that point, of course, like. Bro, I didn't have no friends when I was a kid. Like, I was moving every year. So, of course, I was, like, on the computer a lot. And, yeah, you telling me I can make music on my computer and make, like, cinematic shit. Couldn't wait to go home. I was happy, bro. I was like, damn, this is, like, an escape. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I ended up finding that. And, yeah, it was great. Shout out to Mr. Cotton. Shout out Mr. Cotton, man. You you made a future millionaire right here. (laughs) Man, what future? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like that i like that one thing you, you spoke on too you know because around that time obviously you know mr cotton and then your cousin and now it's time to make beats and you know tap into your influences and references and things that you think are dope i've seen that you mentioned um uh, molly raw it's a mm. big influence for you and i heard that in troops mm, yep i heard that yep. in troops i'm like this, yep. this that's has when my- i was in my molly raw bag I'm, I'm gonna be honest when i was in high school at um parkland high school winston-salem i don't know if you know mm-hmm. but bro i didn't have a phone you know my parents never really bought me clothes or any type of anything because we didn't really have much so i kind of had like an mp3 player and i would go to the library and boot that shit up with hella music and my favorite album when I was a kid, like freshman, you know, a couple years of high school was just Lil Uzi vs. The World. Mm, classic. That's that's really where I get the Molly Raw inform- or, um, inspiration from because, yeah, bro, he did a lot of shit on there, bro. Like, bro, all that shit he did on there, bro. I'm not going to lie. I fuck with bro heavy. Yeah. That, that Lil Uzi vs. The World tape really influenced me a lot, bro. I'm not going to lie. Like, what, what, in my early days. Now I've kind of found my own swag. But. Yeah. Because, I mean, but that's also natural, right? You you look to your references and then, you know, you mimic that and then it leads you off to a path of you, like, finding, like, your own swag, which you, you know, got to the point now. Absolutely. Talk about, like, you know, getting to that point and realizing, like, oh, I got my own swag now. Like, this, this is me. Bro, I'm not going to lie. I just kind of kept trying to experiment. Like, I feel like everything in art is about experimenting and trying to find your own best way to do your own self-expression. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And I don't know. I just, just it took a lot of years, bro. People think I just got here like yesterday. No, I've been making you've been, since like 2015. You've like, been around for a minute. Yeah, but it was like I was on some shit for a while. Like, I don't know. I wouldn't send no beats to nobody. I wouldn't. I don't know. I would just try to keep working, and I did, I never thought I was good enough. 
Like, for a long ass time, I didn't think I was good enough. And but I'm sure that helped, though, like, with that yeah. thought, because now you're just practicing on getting good. So when you do get to send some things out, it all connected. Absolutely. Now I'm there. You feel me? Like, there's been a lot of shit where, um, I don't know. Talk about that, because that's a great mentality to have. I feel like a lot of people try to rush something, but they don't spend the time practicing and, you know, honing in on the craft before they start taking these, you know, big leaps and this and that, because... You know, earlier you said you had like a fear of like kind of like being average, but you know, that kind of implements to, yo, I'm gonna fucking sit here and get nice. And by the time I get nice, I send my shit out. No, hell yeah. You don't want to just come into nothing like, yeah, like I'm, I'm that, I'm that guy. Like nobody's that guy, bro. You feel me? Like mm -hmm. I always feel, even to this day, when I go to the studio, I was at the studio last night. I, I just always tell myself like this shit's ass, like this one's ass. And I have that one where I'm like, this is the one, this is the one that I send out. Everybody hears that one. They don't hear all the other five beats that I make. Yeah. The other 10, 20 beats I make. Like, I try to just only make the one that I really am, like, proud of. Like, I don't want to do nothing again. I just want it to be, like, a full, like, I just want it to be a representation of how I feel. Like, yeah. Like, everything is, like, emotionally based. You get what I mean? Mm-hmm. No, you can definitely, definitely hear that in your production. Um, I feel like emotionally based... It's definitely a lot of turned up rage shit because even that outside, you know, we're talking um, and you're putting me on some music, some artists you're fucking with, and we talked over by some other artists. You're like, nigga, I'm, I'm don't be on some turnt shit. Like, yeah, uh, I like turnt shit. Like, I like fun. a fast life. Like, having fun. Yeah, I'm, but I'm not getting lost in the sauce. I've seen a lot of people get, they they get a little turned and then they lose themselves and they kind of. I'm a type of person where I come from Winston Salem, North Carolina. We've been turned for a while. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean, and it's like we've been had nothing for a while. So it's like, what do you feel like stops someone from getting lost in the sauce? Like, how would you go about, and how have you been going about? You have to appreciate what you have. You know, like yeah. a lot of people think that they just got here, and now they're here now, and it's like, okay, bet I'm this guy now. Like, no, you have to know that. This could all be gone tomorrow, so you have to keep trying to be the best person you could be. Like, yeah. Real shit. At any given moment, you have to. 100%, man. You got to be thankful for where you come from, for sure. Hell yeah. You like, know? you can implement the little turn shit, hang out with whoever you want to hang out with, do what you do, this and that. But, no, nah, I don't want to, like, take anything for granted, you know? Yeah. It's all a blessing at the end of the day. So I have to like, I don't want to, and also I have new fans now. So it's like, why would I, what the fuck I look like having new fans and I'm I'm just going to like start acting sloppy now because you fuck, like, because I think I'm that guy. Like, yeah. it's stupid, bro. I think, you, you know, you should always remember like your work mm -hmm. is always going to speak the loudest. Absolutely. You know? Like that's what's going to make when you walk in a room, like forever niggas is like, you, you know, you ever see Pharrell go to Nigo and Nigo to Pharrell, how they mm. battle each other? Yo, you seen that video of Pharrell? It's been going around on Twitter a lot lately, but it's an old video of, like, Pharrell's telling the guy, like, a bunch of, like, deep inspirational shit, and he's, like, influencing, bro, and he's yeah, and bro's yeah. just like, oh, damn, that, I never thought about that before. Yeah. It's like, yo, bro, shout out to Pharrell, but you could have just put yourself on that game. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could have been moving like that. Mm -hmm. Like, the Brody in the video looks way older than... I think I am right now. Like, it's like, I've been telling myself this shit since I was fucking 15. Where do you feel like that come from? Like, that sense of being um, self-aware and just grind? Um, probably um, when I was a kid, we just didn't have, sh like, a lot of stuff for real. Like, I feel like a lot of people are, like, gifted with the fact that they have whatever they need. And that could kind of translate into, you know, you, you just get complacent with shit and, I don't know. I'm not really, I don't try to get complacent, bro. I try to stay as grounded as I can. Like, I take every day with a grain of salt, for sure. A lot of people's, you know, you've been at this for a while. Some people think you probably just popped up overnight. Mm -hmm. um, but I attest to, you know, people's, you know, misjudgment to how you've connected with, you know, new generational artists, right? From mm -hmm. a Glock 40 to a Netspin to an Osama son. You know, talk a little bit about, you know, how you and um, Glock 40 had connected and, you know, to where you've taken it now um bro basically the the glock stuff came because i actually had a local artist in winston that i was working with heavily like mm -hmm. every day we were riding around together for like a year or two years straight my bro sauce pack tv and i don't know he was super turned i thought he was gonna be the one you know what i mean like and then he, he unfortunately passed away when he was 17. 
Yeah. But he was the best freestyler. He was the best. I don't want to get too deep into it because I'll get emotional, but I don't know. When he passed away, I ended up just, I don't know, I was just on SoundCloud just going through it. Just like, I don't know. I was just listening to whatever because I just wanted to feel some shit. And I ended up finding Glock's music. I found like Money on My Head or like Lost My Damn Mind, one of them songs. Mm Mm-hmm. And I was like, damn, this guy's got a fire-ass voice. You know what I mean? Like, Very distinctive voice. I think that's one of his, you know, as much as he raps and created his own flow, mm-hmm. I think he has such a distinctive voice that you know that's Glock 40 Spaz. Yes, bro. Like, and, and before even, like, nowadays where they have, like, really good mixing on his stuff, like, he started getting in the studio and stuff. Back then, it sounded like, I don't even know, bro. Like, it just sounded so raw. Like, it was so raw. And I was like, this is real emotion right here. He had a good flow, like it was so fire. Like, I fucked with that shit. So I ended up just finding a way to get his contact information and I sent him some beats and then we ended up doing the, the beneficial for anybody beat. Mm-hmm. Made some shit. We locked in for a couple months and then fast forward, I ended up having this feeling like, I don't know, me and Glock was like, we, me and Glock have a love-hate relationship. Like, I love, I love Twin. Sometimes it's like, I don't know, we just... Sometimes we butt heads, you know? That's yeah. what brothers do. Uh, but of course. That's what brothers do, but... Real brothers are that. Yeah, at, sometimes it was just... I don't know. I just didn't know what was going on. And I was like, I don't know, I'm going to just leave bro alone. But then one day I was like, you know what? I don't know. I feel like bro is just too chosen. You know what I'm saying? Like He's yeah. way too chosen. Like I ended up talking to him. We talked it out. He was like, yo, you know what? Pull to Atlanta. I was like, okay, bet. Something told me I had to go to Atlanta like right now. I go to Atlanta right now. We end up making the Batman song. We end up, I end up shooting the video. And um, yeah, that song ended up going stupid for bro. And then like a week or two later, he got locked up. He hasn't been out since, but yeah, I don't know. Me and Glock worked a lot. Like I, I see a lot in bro. Like, whenever he comes home, it's going to be a big movie. For yeah, sure. no, man. We did the interview when he was locked up. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out Glock. Hope you yeah. come home soon. Yeah. Um, I also feel like you bring a different sense of um, vibe to each of the artists that you work with, Glock, Nat, and Osama son. Talk mm-hmm. a bit about like what you feel like you contribute to a song with you and Glock 40. Mm, I don't know. I just feel like it's like there was like an Atlanta trope for a while. It was just Atlanta artists like little dirty dark dark plug beat you know what i mean like, yeah i kind of came into it i wanted to make like some ethereal shit you feel me like legend yeah no hell yeah. not even just the the artist i know who you're talking about too but just like the word itself ethereal like, okay like elaborate on angelic that. like angelic okay you know what i mean like i just wanted to be real like which is his sound too beautiful like yeah. i wanted to be beautiful like batman the melody for that beat is like i try to just I don't know. A lot of the beats I made with Glock, and even the new shit that I had made for Glock, but he unfortunately can't even record on it yet. Um, I try to just like, that's my whole wave, bro. Like I try to make beautiful shit. Like yeah, that's what I want to make. Like shit that makes me feel away in my heart, you know? Because I'm a very harsh critic. Like, yeah, it's almost like this perfect. It's like yin and yang because you know, Glock is looked at as this like dark entity, right? Mm-hmm. And then you're bringing this heavenly side. That's to why it's bro. It's like so well. It's beautiful. Like. It, Everybody loves a good yin and yang, you know? Yeah, I love that. Um, so you and Glock killed it. You know, you guys are doing your thing. Um, obviously, it goes away. And then once again, you're, you know, I, I would want to, uh, you know, hats off to you, to your ears, right? Mm-hmm. Osama son mm-hmm. is moving. Now you're moving on to somebody else that's propelled and moved his way to the forefront of culture. Um, talk about, you know, what you first heard in Osama son and why you wanted to work with him because... You know, he's doing his thing right now. Well, the, the reason I originally wanted to work with O was because, um, honestly, I feel like that was a void. Like, after Glock got locked up, it mm-hmm. was a void right there. Like, that was a that was something that needed to be occupied. Yeah. And I was hearing the beats that O was getting on originally, like the CTSV and Class and all that old shit. Like, I was like, this is damn near like some Glock type beats, but... He's not coming on like Glock. Like he's not trying to bite Glock swag. He's on some like auto tune, swaggy like it's turnt, but it's the same type of beat. So I was like, "Yo, you doing the same type of beats? I might as well come in here, 
You know what I'm saying? And we ended up chopping it up. He's from South Carolina. Yeah. And I, I just fucked with bro a lot. Like, I don't know. We ended up making some fire shit. Troops was like our first song we ever made. Fire. You like Troops? Turnt. I love so that So turnt. Yeah. Um, Blonde is my favorite song by you two. Oh, really? Yes. I love Blonde. It reminds me of like 2016 Pierre. Mm-hmm. Like that I love melody. Pierre too. Pierre is a great, he bro, he's go But it also has, you know, your intensity to it. Oh, yeah. You know? So no, I thought it was a very... Um, Dope mix to like a hats off to a reference. Like, oh, Hell yeah. Wow. Blonde is one of the first, um, not one of the first, but it's like one of the few collabs I have. Like, I don't collab too much. I try to do mo- most of my stuff by myself, but Blonde is a beat I've made with my friend On the Way Reg. And he's like, it was all like, he's one of my bros from North Carolina. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like, he's not really like a music guy. He's more of like a get this money guy. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah, he's yeah. This one of my real bros. He's one of my bigger homies. So, like, I saw he was making beats and shit, so we just used to hang out together, like, all the time. Mm-hmm. And we would just get turned, like, do everything we already do, you know? But that day, I don't know, we were just together all day, and we made that whole beat together. And I was like, yeah, you know how I'm going to send this to? Osama. I sent it to Osama. Osama gets on it. And then, like, six, seven months, eight months later, like, it comes out. Everybody loves it. And I love that song. So hard. As soon as it comes in. Mm, 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 mm. That's my shit, bro. I, bro, at first, I don't even think they were going to put that on the album. But I was like, yo, this don't, the one. don't sleep on this song. Yeah. I'm telling you, this is going to be one of the ones. And yep, oh, I love it. Behold. I love it, man. Um, what What's a session like uh, with you and Osam, um, Osama's son? Um... Me and Osama, we have a lot of fun. Um, I'll say O likes to do what he do. I do what I do. I'm like a wine with the Casamigos type of guy, you know. A concoction this man has displayed in front of me. Wine, Casam in that cup. Wine, Casamigos, and a little bit of Red Bull? It's nothing crazy. It's nothing like we haven't seen this before. You know what I this mean? This is the magic potion for the, for the swag. Like, this is the concoction... That gets you these beats. It's just fun. I have a good time. But me and O, we, we get to the studio. We work. We have fun. Um, I usually will come to the studio with O and I'll like have beats already made. Because most of the time, I try to focus on when I go to the studio by myself. I'll just crank out all the beats I need to make. Like four mm-hmm. or five beats. And I'll do that like three days in a row. So boom, now you got 15 beats. I get to the studio with O. I get to the studio with Net. And um, we'll just, I'll just play them the shit that I made, and they'll be like, boom, this one me, this one me. They'll make what they make on it. And yeah, it's usually how it goes. That's I'm, fire, I'm too man. Crazy. Did you, you know, as someone that works with them pretty early on, did you see them getting to this point? Like, did yeah, you hell them? yeah. I'm not gonna lie, bro. I'm kind of like a, I just try to, I keep a, um open mind with stuff. Like, I feel like a lot of people, they do stuff just because it's trendy or whatever the fuck. But I try to, like, only fuck with people when I think that there's a lot of potential there. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'm like, okay, I see it in you. You might not, they might not see it in you right now, but I think I can be the one to help you get to where you need to go. Yeah. Not not saying that I got anybody where they need to go. I'm not check, taking credit for nothing, but. But you see how you can help and enhance, you know? No, for sure. And, and that's my goal. If I'm not doing that, then I'm worthless. You get what I'm saying? Like You know, really, what are you doing here? Right. You know? There's a lot of producers that get to, they, they pull to a session, they just play shit. They're going to make a motherfucker another song that they already made. And it's like. It's probably like, not going to come out because it's already. It, they already have a better song with the same, same vibe. vibe yeah. You know what I mean? So it's 100%. like, I try to make my beats like a, a reflection of how I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I just bring it to the table and. I don't know. We just make a bunch of shit. Whatever comes out, comes out. Yeah, and then now, you know, Net and, and Osama being so close, you guys collaborate. And, you know, I feel like um, the song you just put out with Net um, was very much needed Yeah. for Net. Like, what was it, Nothing Like You? Yeah, like I feel like Nothing Like You was very much needed because I feel like it was split. Like the internet kind of was hating on Net at first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then... But I think they hate on a lot of stuff that's polarizing. They do, right? But I feel like, in a sense, like it was probably the most concise thought from Net, like as far as like visuals, beat, rapping, mm-hmm. like everything was packaged. It was like, oh, y'all was hating. Mm, bet, bet. Here's this. Yeah, you know no, what I mean? Sure. Like, sure. sent, like 
the the voices in it, like everything from the bounce, like it was it was super like, oh shit. No, hell yeah. Here's hell Net, yeah. like Yeah, no, I'm very happy with that song. Honestly, bro, like I made that beat off the same concoction I'm off right now. <laughs> um, we was at the studio. You gotta sell that juice, man. Man, what? Should you gotta put it. it. You think I should? With the fucking drums? Oh, <laughs> that me up. <laughs> with the drums? Yeah, no. Nah, That'll sure. be hard, like a drum pack with the concoction. Mm, call that shit. You know like, how Cash Cobain got the rum punch? You got a rum punch? Yeah, like he got a song, got the rum punch. You gotta make your own concoction. Of this. Write that down. You gotta make your own concoction. Like here's that. Ugh. You know what I mean? But yeah, go back to to Net. I'm um, talking about the story of that. Okay, so boom, was making the beat at the studio with my bro Nino, um, Nino Andretti. Shout out, he's a great guy mm-hmm. in New York. Um, we were just chilling at the studio. It was a bunch. It was regular, okay type session. You know, just, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna get into details, but you know, it's a good time at all at all times. And we're drinking, you know, Casamigos with the wine and. <laughs> having a good time and um yeah i ended up i don't even want to talk about the alleged sample accusations because i don't know if that's been cleared up yet but we'll let that one work. we'll let that one slide yeah okay yeah so allegedly something this and that but we made the beat and um yeah i was like this is the one out of that session every time i make a, a bunch of beats i'm like this is the one i always have one or two that i'm like these are the ones that i think are going to be something big yeah and um, yeah, we made that beat. Yeah. Sent it off. Sent it to Net. He ended up recording at his bro's house at the time. And yeah, fucking ended up making the net, the uh, Nothing Like You song. And when he said it to me, I was like, yo, this is the one. My friend DJ Renacy actually was like, Shout out Ren, man. Yeah, shout out to Ren. He was like, yo, this song that Net just made last night is the one i was like for real he's like play it for me he plays it for me crazy bro i was like yo this is crazy took a while for it to come out we made that shit in like november or december mm-hmm. and then it finally came out after a lot of treatment and just getting everything together and yeah i was very proud of like how yeah, it came I, out. i think how that was packaged put out from the video to you know very tasteful very tasteful. Shout out John. Shout out Joy. I see a few guys around him that got a lot of style. Shout out to shout out to Joe too. Yeah. Shout out to Joe. Joe, I'm not familiar with Joe, but shout out Joe. Yeah. Um, shout out to Noah. Shout and Noah. Noah. Noah doing his thing for sure. Yeah. Definitely um building the right team around him right now. Mm-hmm. Um to say uh the most like, you know, earlier you talked about, you know, you just being in New York and collabing with bro on that beat. I feel like, you know, now I want to know the creative process of you, you know, like, mm. like how do you go about making beats and even just who you choose to collab with? Because that's such a big thing. It's like, you know, like you probably your emails filled with like thousands of loops. Like, how do I even go and seek through this? Like, who do I give a chance? Like, mm. am I listening to one of these loops and it, you're one and done? If you don't impress me on this first one, I'm not going through the whole thing. No, for sure. I'm not going to lie. I don't really go through loops. Like, People always asking me or my manager, Sharif, like, yo, what can we send you melodies? Can we send you this and that? Uh, it's like, bro, honestly, bro, I'm like drums are easy, gang. I've been playing drums since I was a kid. I played in high school band. I played mm-hmm. jazz band. I was playing drum set. Um, I've always been playing drums. I've been playing drums since I was in church. So it's like drums are not really nothing. I'm really like batting an eye at. It's really the melodies. So if I'm going to use another motherfucker's melodies, like, I'm not really trying to just use your melody and then add a bullshit little drum on top. I'm going to feel like I'm cheating. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I want it to be, like, a real effort. Like, I want it to be... I, bro, I go into every beat I make for Ned or O or Glock or whoever I'm working with. It's like an expression of how I really feel. So I'll go through a week. I might go through a whole week not making any beats. I might go to the studio, but I might not make anything. I might just have a little party. I go to parties, I go to this, I go to that. I, I take how I feel at the end of the week. It might be sad. It might be happy. It might be melancholy. Yeah. Whatever it is. And I try to channel that into my beats. Like, I don't really try to just make beats for a placement. It's not about the placement. It's lifestyle. Yeah, it's about the lifestyle. It's about me really expressing how I feel in my art. Like, 
Mm -hmm. I want it to be an art form at the end of the day. It's not about beats. You know what I mean? Like, they call it beats, but I call it art. You know what I mean? And as you should. Um, I think one of the game, early on, like two, three years ago, I did an interview with Southside, and he was speaking on that. He was like, whatever I made is coming for me has never existed before. Mm -hmm. I'm literally making art. Like, yeah. nobody else can think of this and make this. Like, I yeah. just put out something new and fresh to the world. And some guys get like, they, they, they tell you that, not saying Southside, Southside's a go. But I'm saying some people say that to you and the whole time they're using people's loops or somebody else's ideas. They're using half of their brain. I bro, half of my, bro, if I played the beats I made last night at the studio, it'd be like, oh, okay. You feel me? Like, it's all straight from my brain. Ooh, I'm not, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, yeah. So you cooking up from scratch a lot? Mm -hmm. Every time. So it's very rare for you to use loops? Very rare. I don't ever really do it. Damn. I don't like to use loops because it just feels like it's not fair. It's like, okay, yeah, I could do this. Anybody could do this. Why would I do something anybody could do? Mm. You know what I mean? I don't want to be anybody. I want to be somebody. Isms, isms. I feel that. So what do you feel like is the ongoing, like, you know, there's like a lot of discord um, online about um, producers that lose use loops and don't use loops. Like, I'm not, what's your thoughts? Um, shout out to people that do whatever they do because at the end of the day, like making beats is a whole journey. You know, like you don't just get there overnight. And some people have to do what they can do to be able to like feel like they're keeping up. But it's like, bro, I literally made beats since like 2015, mm -hmm. and this was not an overnight thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I just purposely stayed out the way for so many years because I was not proud of where I was at with it yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then now that I'm at the point where I feel like, I don't know, like I'm I'm more proud of my shit. I was more proud of my shit when I started working with Glock. And then from there, I've been able to grow. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just been, I don't know. I don't want to like sit here and cheat code my way through this shit, bro. Like. If it takes harder, that's better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's it's I don't wanna just be it's not it's not about being easy, bro. Like, I don't know. So life I mean, I think you're looking at more like art and lifestyle, you know, to kind of summarize everything. Um, which is, you know, everybody got their own journeys and different things, and I feel like that's how you wanna carve your stuff out and no, sharpen yeah. your pen every single day. Hell yeah. You know? Um any thoughts on you putting out like a compilation album? Like, I feel like, you know, I said it outside to you. I feel like you're in the position right now to put out a project with some of the dopest new artists, you know, mm -hmm. from Osama, Net, Glock, Che Romani, and, you know, a lot of the guys. I think that's something that you can hone in on a generation and mm -hmm. be a generational producer, mm -hmm. like, you know, with, you know, like a Metro Boomin or yeah. know, something like that. Yeah, no, for sure. I definitely am working on that right now. Um, that's been a big priority for me. Um, I just wanted to make sense. Like, I know everybody wants an okay tape and they expect it to be okay, Glock, Osama, Nat, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But I also want to be able to put people on there that you wouldn't expect. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to say names of who I'm working with or this and because I don't want to jinx anything, but there's a lot of big shit on the floor right now and I've just been trying to, you know, stay ahead of it. I also want to work with people that are completely outside of this genre. Like, you know, if I could be able to work with like a Bjork or a Kesha or a okay. Katy Perry or a Harmony Korine or a playwright or a, you know what I mean? Like a opera person who... who Adele? Yeah, shout out to Adele, but I'm talking about people that really work in opera. You feel me? Like... I want to be able to work with okay. violinists. I want to be able to work with, true, true. Uh, you know what I mean? Everything. like. Yeah. Um, Adele is. No, shout out. Yeah, <laughs> super fire. <laughs> one of the, so they, what a generational voice right A lot there. of people connect me with like the trap turnt shit. Like it's all lit. But I also make dance music. I also do this and that. But I just yeah. don't let you hear it. You know. So you want to wait till you get to a point where you can, you know, use all your arms to make one cohesive thing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I want to be able to work with like go to DJs like OG Ron C from Texas or like, you know, okay, just lit people. Like I fuck with all, I fuck with like, I'm the type of person I really fuck with OGs. So like anybody that I feel like. That's great to hear. Like, yeah. I feel like that's going to take you far because, you know, being a student is like the ultimate weapon. 
No, absolutely. You know, game, information, knowledge, you know, is going to get you the furthest because you're going to know where something comes from and how to even reintroduce a feeling, you know, reintroduce mm-hmm. a sound like, yeah. yo, I heard this song, ah, like my, I was digging and I found this and boom, now I just sampled this and gave this vibe and these new kids, they've never heard that. They haven't. You know, so now they're like. They're like, damn, what is this like piece of flavor right here? I've never tasted this before. But, and you get two nods because you're getting a nod from those kids and, and you're you getting a nod from the OGs. Mm-hmm. That's what makes you super dangerous, you know what I mean? Mm. So I, I think that's gonna be very dope for There's you. There's a lot of producers I feel like kind of get into this game and they're like, okay, who is trendy right now? We gotta work with so-and-so who has a little TikTok song. We have to work with this guy who's always posted by all the underground meme blogs. Mm-hmm. Like, I fuck with everybody. I fuck with the meme blogs. I fuck with the this and that, but I wanna work with people that like have stood the test of time. Like, 100%. Cause I don't wanna just get here and go. Like. It's not what I didn't work this hard for that. You know what I mean? I want to be here for a long haul. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? So you got to take advice from people who have really did that. And know what it takes to build a career. Absolutely. I feel like a lot of people come in here and don't realize that that's what they're building. Like you're building a legacy and a career. You're not just, you know, as much as you are making beats, like that's a big part of it too. You know, there's a lot of strategy and there's war in this. You know what I mean? No, hell it's yeah. Like, it's like, it's a competitive thing, but it's also like, it's not competitive if you just lock in and you just ignore everybody, which is what you should be doing. Like, you know, it's you, you don't not give the, the the opponent benefit of the doubt, but at the end of the day, like, it's you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. show what you got in your mind. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like Maya Angelou wasn't sitting here like thinking about all the other poets. Like, let me just That's- do it. Let me outdo them. Like, she wasn't, you know? You're not worried about some other nigga like no, fuck nigga like no, no. I'm that nigga. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that dog. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but another thing too, I feel like as far as advice for producers, and I feel like this is one thing a lot of producers kind of you know constantly get stuck on is like beat blocks, mm-hmm. right? Like, what what would you say would be your advice to get over a beat block, or how you've gotten over a beat block before? Um, I feel like beat block is like a regular thing for everybody, but. You got to just, I don't know. I feel like beat block is real common when it comes to like, I don't know. You, you, you Guys that focus on loops or they focus on another producer to help them finish their beats, you might have beat block because you don't have any loops in your email. You get mm-hmm. what I mean? But if you're sitting here constantly making your own melodies, how will you ever have beat block? Because you're always going to be sitting here making your own stuff, you know? Yeah. You just, it's, it's, you get in the program and you, you make a melody and you enjoy it. Like you, you see what you can make. It's, it's at the end of the day, it's about what can we make, you know? It's, mm-hmm. it's an experiment. This whole shit is an experiment, you know? You're not gonna get beat blog if you're just constantly trying to like evolve the art form, you know? Or just listen to some other things outside your genre. Exactly. Would you seem like you do like- Yeah, lately I've been listening to mostly like Aphex Twin. Shout out Aphex Twin, yeah, for sure. That's my, that's my biggest inspiration right now. Them and like, I don't know. I don't want to say title fight because I feel like everybody listens to title fight now, but I love title fight. You know, that's a funny thing in the statement. It's like, and I've been saying this to somebody because I had like some stuff in my house and this and that. I'm, I feel like the, the internet has brought so much people to access to so many things or just in a sense oversaturate or the, the information to things. But being a little bit older now, I'm not going to let people ruin shit for me. I like yeah. this. Like okay. I, I like this and I've always liked this or I wanted to get into this. So I'm not gonna let because it's super hype for me to be like, I don't like this now. You know what I mean? That like means. I I can't I can't get behind that. It's like just because you niggas is it's means something to me. Just because you know what I mean? Like Absolutely. simple as that. Like fuck it. Like sorry, Absolutely. maybe I'll maybe I'll speak about it differently in, in a sense of passion. You can know he's not doing it like the other guys. No, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I, I mean for a lot of things, I feel like that, but some some things, it's like, damn, you ever just feel like it's some shit that you thought was like your thing, and you're like, damn, I love this shit, and then it's like, people come out of nowhere, they blow it out of, like, you know what I mean? Like No, I know. Like, Deftones, like, I love Deftones, but now everybody loves Deftones. Because the problem is, a lot of things, people make things their personality. No, facts. Like, and it's like, be a human, make being a human your personality. Like, Hell be yeah. a person, be an ever-growing thing that's influence and constant learning and being a student not just like 
you know, it's in a sense like people make things their personality and then like in terms like they'll blow the ACL and now they can't go to the NFL. Mm. Now you're a football player that never went to the NFL. You know? Instead of just a human. I liked football. I was curious and passionate about it. But yeah. I didn't just make being a football player my only thing that I liked in life. That's why I just try to like everything art related, I try to treat it like and the beat shit managed to take me to this point now where I can do what I want. But before that, it was just a thing of like, I enjoyed it and I want to be able to like see how far I can go with it. Like every time I would get into FL or mm. Ableton or whatever I was using at the time, it would be a thing of like, I really like making beats. I want to see if I can make a better beat than I did yesterday. It's curiosity. And then you fast forward five years later yeah. and you're making crazy shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's like Virgil, like Virgil, like you know, RIP Virgil Abloh. Like he was more curious about everything that he was doing. And looked at like how did a clock work? Like it's like FX Twist says he literally just gets in a program every day and just clicks random buttons and he doesn't know what's happening. Yeah. He yeah. just does it. He just experiments and that's that's the beauty of it. You know exactly. what I mean? It's art. You're not Apex Twin isn't sitting here making a beat talking about, oh, let me think if uh somebody will like this beat. It's not about the, the placement, it's about the art. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's like curiosity. He it's wanted like, to play around with it to the point where it was going to make sense and it would be like a beautiful expression for people. And they would hear it and it would strike a tone with them. And yeah. I feel like that's what's important. 100%, man. Um, man, we're going to be okay. Um, got a lot. I, I think the future is bright for you, bro. I Thank think, you. You know, from hanging out before the interview and, you know, now talking to you on camera. Um, anything you got coming up that you want to talk about? You know, let the people know. Man, I don't want to say too much, but I've been working a lot. I've been making music with artists you might not expect, and I just want to... Some you did expect. Can I can I tell them what you told me? No, nah, I don't. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing. Don't tell them yet. Don't tell them. <laughs> it's, it's all, it's, it's everything going to come out in due time. But, yeah, um, we're just working. Um, album coming out soon. Uh, movies coming soon, parties coming soon, and yeah, I'm gonna impress y'all. I seen you. Um, you met Laser, um, mm -hmm. and you tweeted about it. Yeah. Do we expect anything from you and Laser to come out? Uh, I fuck with Laser heavy. I would love to make some stuff with him. I'm not sure if he necessarily is like working with new producers. I know he has his team, but that'd be sick for sure. Yeah. Laser's super sick. How do you go about choosing who you worked with? Because you've had such good track records with artists that are, you know, forward facing in the culture and becoming something. Like, how are you like making those decisions? Um, I don't know. I look at people like, I don't know. I have a very good gut feeling with a lot of stuff, you know, mm -hmm. like if people aren't, I don't know. I can just tell when somebody is like has potential as a human outside of music, you know what I mean? So it's like right now I'm over here trying to find a new artist that I could turn up on some. This is just a personal goal of mine. I want to find somebody that I can turn up that doesn't make music at all. They're literally just a person, you it's know? It's like Casey Hill and Kanye West. It's like you go to a skate park <laughs> and you're like, this guy is over here. He's just mad swag. He's mad cool. And like, he has a cool voice. Let's see mm -hmm. if we can turn him up. That's just a personal little achievement of mine that I'm trying to get right now. But outside of that, yeah, I don't know. I just focus on people that I think are, like, cool. Like, we link together. I'm very much like an in-person person. We go to a studio and, you know, if, if the vibes are right, we'll make beautiful shit every time. Love it. So make sure your fit is nice when you see the Yo, it's not... <laughs> Cause you, you might be like, oh, you kind of got that shit on. You, All right, yeah, you come to the studio, man. Come, come lay a sixteen down. <laughs> well, um, we usually do this to close it out and everything. What is your message for our generation? Um, I would say be the best person that you can be at all times at any given day, and just work your hardest. Don't think about too much. Whatever everybody else is doing, it's not important. It's, it's just completely irrelevant. You just got to try hard. That's it. My boy. Okay. Thank you.